Ranking up in Apex is not an easy task, at least not for most. The reason why would probably surprise a lot of you. Usually players assume their gun skill or mechanics just isn't where it needs to be to reach diamond, masters, etc. But for most cases, this is actually wrong. The true reason players can't rank up or they hit a plateau is actually because they don't know how to play at the highest level and they make mistakes constantly that other players take advantage of. This sounds a bit scary, but I promise it's not. In today's video, we're going to go over everything you need to know to be successful and ranked. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Cam. I'm an Apex Legends content creator and my channel is centered around helping you reach your potential. I've reached masters several times and this video is gonna cover everything you need to reach it to. Subscribe if you're new. Let's get into the video. Okay, actually one more thing. Most players don't know a thing about rotating or the map in general. Today, we fix that. So make sure you stick around to the end because it might be the most important thing we talk about in this video. Not landing with your team is the first thing I wanna talk about. Three stacking or solo queue, this rule applies the same. You'd be surprised the amount of times my team gets free KP plus a whole POI's loot just because we noticed the team contesting us isn't landing together. Or maybe two of them are, but one decides to land isolated. When flying in, you and your team should always be looking for how many teams are landing at the same POI, where they are landing, and like I mentioned earlier, if any of them are split from their team. If they do split, well then you and your team dive on the solo, get the easy KP, and now it's a huge advantage 3v2. This is a great way to get momentum going in your favor early on. One thing I want to mention is when I say landing with your team, I don't necessarily mean all three of you land on top of each other and share one building's loot. That's also a great way to get squad wiped. Sometimes the situation does call for this, but most of the time you want to be landing near your teammates, but getting your own loot. But if action does strike, your team is right there to assist you. Most people sleep on this skill. Don't be like most people. Throughout this video, pay attention to the gunfights. I'm always looking to take off angles or trying to take as much space as the enemy is allowing. In ranked, you want to squad wipe as quick as possible. The longer the fight goes, the better odds become that a third party is near. Not to say third parties are always avoidable, because they aren't, but a key to ranking up efficiently is minimizing the opportunity you're susceptible to third parties. With that said, the best way to avoid getting third party is like I mentioned earlier, finishing fights quickly. And you do this by winning your trades and applying pressure. Once you crack an opponent, they are more than likely going to pop a battery. This allows you a window to push up, take space, and take an even better angle. See, what you don't want to do is you and your teammates stay in the same spot, taking and dishing out damage without any real intent to finish this fight. That's when this whole thing starts to unfold. If you don't take your advantage when you have them, you're basically just waiting for something to happen to you. And in my experience, that something is never good. Always focus on being the aggressor. If you make a mistake, learn from it. But way too many players rather do nothing and play it safe. And safe just isn't going to get you RP. Earlier, we talked about third parties and how sometimes there's just nothing you can do. The smaller the ring gets, the further into the game you go, the more and more of a chance you have to get third partied. When we discuss rotations later, I'll go into more detail on how to pick a more isolated fight, but we also mentioned earlier that sometimes you squad wipe and another team is ready to go looking to take advantage of you being weak. So from here on out, I want you to treat every squad wipe like there's another team closing in. And here's what that looks like. If you have a teammate knocked, you or your partner needs to res immediately. The other person needs to scout for more teams as well as, and I can't stress this enough, drop an armor for your down teammate. Depending on the situation, your team might not have the luxury of time to get a full reset off before fighting again. How many times have you or a teammate been knocked, rezzed, and then instantly knocked again because you're one shot? Dropping armor for your down teammate is a habit you must build. At the highest level, this is a staple piece every player has. Another reason why this is such a big deal is the team third party typically plays a little too aggressive because they are looking to take advantage of the situation. Believe it or not, this is actually great for your team. You see, if they overextend because they think you're weak or have a player one shot or you guys are all banged up, 
but in retrospect, everyone still has armor, the possibility of you getting a knock and flipping the advantage is a lot higher than you think. We've all been in that situation where we've been the third party, but went a little too ham and lost because of it. So as of today, you're building the habit of dropping an armor for your teammate, even if that means dropping purple and swapping to a white. If you want to rank up, this is the kind of thing that needs to be common practice for you. So start being a better teammate and drop your armor. Now we're going to take everything we learned and switch perspectives. Let's say one of your teammates got cracked and lost a trade. The enemy is probably going to push up and try to capitalize on the situation. This is where you come in and even the playing field. Knowing that your teammate was cracked and that the opponent is going to move up, your sole purpose should be to inflict as much damage as possible as the player rotates cover to cover. This is a golden opportunity to do big damage, if not one clip them. You should always be watching the HUD in the top right corner, so whether your teammate comms that he got cracked or not, you should know. And then use that info advantageously. Fights can flip quickly in Apex. You can go from cracking the opponent and aggressing to crouch behind cover, one shot, trying to heal, five seconds later. Sometimes the best offense truly is defense. Apex is a game that you have to manage so much information at once. There's so much intel being displayed at any given moment. All you have to do is take it. You start doing that, and you'll be miles ahead of the players who just point and shoot. It's about that time in the video to discuss the thing that will probably have the most impact on your ranked games. And that's map knowledge and rotating. So here it is. Look at this circle. First thing to figure out when looking at the map is, am I safe or do I need to travel? Did the zone pull to me or do I need to start moving? In this case, we got some moving to do. In this particular scenario, we're not crazy far from ring. So if my teammates and I wanted to look for some early KP with the least amount of third parties, we could rotate barometer. This would be the highest chance for an isolated 3v3. A good rule of thumb is center of map, or better yet, center of circle, is the highest chance of being third party. When playing edge, in most cases, is safer. Another thing to keep in mind are the chokes. C-note cave, barometer, mill, down beast, all have to move. So avoiding the chokes that funnel multiple POIs into one area is always a good idea. Jurassic, for example, this would be an area I'd try to avoid. Not to mention there are prowlers roaming, but mill, c-note, barometer, antenna, and shipfall are all getting funneled into that area. Chances are, in this case, if you fight there, you're dying there. Now look at the ring. The circle has pulled even further away. Now only launch pad and storm catcher is safe. A concept very few people know or understand is what the fast or slow side of circle means. The way you can tell is that the fast side is always going to be the side of zone that has the furthest distance to travel and will be moving the fastest. If you get caught here, especially late in the game, it's probably GG's. In this case, Cascade Falls is on the fast side of zone, where the slow side in this example would be launch pad. This is valuable for many reasons. One of the reasons is the zone is always going to pull closer to the slow side, so more often than not, if you're on the slow side, you're going to have a great positioning if not God spot. Slow side is also how it sounds. The zone has very little to move, so the ring closes very slowly. The big takeaway from this is try and rotate to the slow side of zone as often as possible. You do that, and I promise you're going to have a way easier time gaining RP and winning games. If you like this video, I have other guides just like this that will continue helping you improve as a player. If you learned something, don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.